Hi everyone, my name is Archie. I know it's not good to read other people's messages, but I did it, which I now deeply regret. I set my friend up, and she's my best and only friend. I don't know what I was just thinking. Well, anyway guys, as you watch my story, give me your opinion. It's really important to me. Like the video and I'll keep it up. And yes, give me a plus sign in the comments if you've screwed up once or more. So, about my friend. Her name is Jess. She's the coolest and most popular girl in school. She's insanely pretty, but also unsociable and a little closed off. But still, her reputation is clean. Everyone thinks she's arrogant. But I know she just keeps people at arm's length. Everyone but me, that is. I, compared to her, am a loser. Even our dog doesn't take my opinion into account. When I say, stop shitting on my slippers, the dog looks through me and walks away. Unpleasant. As for Jess, once again, when the guys were dragging me in their arms to dunk my head in the men's room, she got in the way and said that if they didn't let me go, she would throw up something for them. They listened to her because they had already seen her punch one show off when he tried to humiliate her. He didn't get away with it. No one has touched her since. The guys threw my carcass out on the floor. And I tried to stand up sharply to wipe my tears away and she held out her hand. I hovered staring for a long time, unable to believe she'd done that for me. Move already. Huh? Oh yeah, sorry, thank you so much. You're welcome. I wasn't thinking and if I had, the problems would have been reduced. What are you talking about? You're talking to the wrong people, Archie. But they're my friends. Don't need any enemies with them. Okay, bye. She left quickly and I froze. I couldn't sleep all night trying to analyze her words. And already in the morning, when the boys met me at the front door, I told them not to do that again. Of course, they cracked up and laughed, but they didn't touch me. Jess from the back seat smiled slightly. In class, it turned out she hadn't done the assignment. The instructor gave her a chance to fix it. And just when I was strong in literature, I offered to help as a thank you. She took it. We practiced after school, sitting in the park, and I explained to her how to write essays. She got an A grade, and after that, we somehow started communicating. It didn't take long before we became real friends. I learned a lot of interesting things about her, such as that she volunteers and looks for a shelter for homeless animals. With every paycheck from work, she buys them food, and also sometimes goes to the nursing home to read books to the elderly. This struck me because you can never tell from the looks of her that she is so kind. We found a lot of common topics to talk about. We went to class together and after I walked her home. Two months flew by just like that and then I started to realize that I was falling in love with her. At first I denied it, but then I started calling and writing more often, asking what she was up to, what she was doing. I couldn't reveal my feelings to her and at the same time, I was afraid she would find a boyfriend. Just thinking about it made it happen. We met at school, as usual, but Jess was stuck on her phone. Hey Jess, what are you up to? What are you doing? Oh, nothing, sorry, it's just... Who's texting? Someone I know. Who? Do I know him? What does he want? You're too nosy today. I'm trespassing, I know I am. Why are you prying then? Have you done the literature? I did. The good mood had gone out of me. I just felt like if I didn't risk it now, it would be over. I asked her to meet me after class and go for a walk. We chatted as usual about nothing, and then she got a call, and she said she'd be right over. I pestered her with questions again, but she said it was none of my business. <sighs> my volcano of jealousy exploded. She ran off and I came up with a plan. The next night, I invited her over to my house under the pretense of solving algebra. She was good at it. While she was doing the problems, I said I was going to get her something to eat and grabbed her phone technically off the table. I ran downstairs, opened the direct line, and saw the first correspondence with some doctor. I don't get it, I said to myself. But as I read on, I realized that Jess had fake breasts and one of them. Holy crap, I said out loud. Yes, what? Oh, mum, you scared me. Is it okay to have sandwiches? Yes, you brought your girlfriend again, didn't you? She's not my girlfriend. Kind of in love with her. It's nothing like that. We're just friends. That's how it starts. Mum, that's enough. Let me eat, please. I went upstairs, blocked her phone, and put it back. Then someone started texting her again, but I couldn't see who. She sat down in another chair and was texting intently. I grabbed her hand and suggested we go for a bike ride. 
We rode far away, laughing and falling around. I couldn't get my jealousy out of my head and trying to find out who she was texting with. Man, if it wasn't for my mum, I would have had time to scroll better. What? I, I love you. Be my girlfriend. Are you kidding me? Do you love me? I've got to go. Bye. That broke my heart. For the first time, I felt a sharp pain. It couldn't get any worse. I came home and cried. I was so scared. And in the morning, I realized that she had someone else since she had shaved me off. After all, no one can communicate with her except me, which means she found a boyfriend. The jealousy, the resentment, it was overwhelming. I went into the school and didn't even say hello. She did not insist. At the end of the week, we had a party right at school where we were celebrating some weird event. Of course, the guys were illegally sneaking alcohol and I got drunk and saw Jess talking on the phone and approached her. Who are you talking to? Oh, you were talking to me all of a sudden. Who were you talking to? It's none of your business, okay? Yes, it is. I'm your best friend. No one can stand you but me. How's that? You're obnoxious. You're all brutal and brutish. But in fact, you whine at the sight of stray dogs. For whom is this mask for? Or do you think nobody cares about you? If you're so careful to hide your good inner world, shut up, Archie, or I'll hit you. Ooh, you've had a love of physical violence since you were a child, haven't you? Daddy didn't beat you for anything. <laughs> Fuck you, motherfucker. There's more. You're a complex person. I can see why. Your breasts aren't real. You're one of them. At that moment, the music stopped and everyone around me heard what I said. Everyone started looking up and laughing and whispering. <laughs> Jess gave me the middle finger and left. It wasn't until I woke up in the morning that I realized how badly I had screwed up. Jess didn't show up at school for a week, didn't answer my text or pick up my phone. When I got to her house, her little sister told me that she wasn't home. And then at school, our teacher came up to me. She asked me if I knew where Jess was, and I said I didn't. I'm just worried she's supposed to be having another surgery. For what? You yelled at the whole school about what? What, do you mean another one? I thought you knew. I mean, she had breast cancer. She had one cut out for that reason. And then it kind of started relapsing with just the other one. Jess was getting ready for surgery. You guys are friends, don't you know that? I've got to run. I knew what hospital she might be in. I shoved everyone on the way, ran into the reception area, recognized the room and ran to her. Her little sister was sitting there. At the sight of me, Jess nodded that she could come out. I couldn't start a conversation for a long time, walking around and around before I asked how she was and what the doctors were saying. I'll live, no reoccurrence, no need for surgery. Oh my God, that's great, I'm so glad. Why? It would be one more reason to tell the school about my breasts. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was jealous. You were on the phone all the time and it was driving me crazy. That was my doctor. Shit, I'm a stupid idiot. I'm so sorry, I'm so embarrassed. I made a mistake. Was it true what you said about loving me? Yeah, I'm in love with you. I don't know how. I know I'm not the kind of guy you want, but I fell in love and I couldn't take your rejection. Who said I was rejecting you? What do you mean? I didn't say no. You stopped talking to me and then you embarrassed me. I didn't know what to do. I'd had a drink and then it happened. I just don't trust guys, at least not right away. That means just give me time. Happiness. I experienced great happiness at that very moment. A wave came washing over me. Jess was released from hospital and today I'm getting ready for our very first date. How do you think it will go? Wish me luck. Hi, I'm Layla. Tell me, how much do you believe in the theory of the existence of your double? Rate it on a scale of 1 to 5 and write in the comments. I want to tell you the story of how I found a doppelganger and honestly, I almost had to change my lifestyle because of her. How, for example, go to prison instead of her. In general, listen. A couple of years ago, my father and I moved to live in Napa, California. It was a small town. After my father and mother divorced, I stayed with my father because my mother went to live with her new husband and decided that they would have children of their own. To be honest, I wasn't even upset because I was always closer to my dad. We immediately decided to choose a city in this state, closer to Disneyland. My dad also liked to frolic and ride rides, which is how we fought off depression and stress every weekend. It was cool. Upon arrival, my dad got a job at a small local company, and I went to school. 
I was only a month away from the start of the school year, and I was terribly worried about new acquaintances and adventures. This month passed quickly. We didn't even notice. And then the school year started. At first, everything was cool, easy, and good. I endeared myself to a lot of guys. All spoke of me as a simple and kind girl. Dad was flattered. Well, then something happened that I would never have had in a bad dream. I was arrested. I was sitting in biology class when the local sheriff came in. He immediately called my name and told me to get up. I was handcuffed in front of everyone and taken down the hall to my car. My palms were sweating from fear. I didn't understand what was happening. No one said a word. I took one last look at my new friends and left. My father was invited to the station. He took off from work and we were given a whole interrogation. I was charged with assaulting a person, specifically a girl named Nastasio Clare. According to the sheriff, I attacked her at Disneyland last Thursday, allegedly because she took my place in the queue, for which I beat her unconscious. My father became very indignant and repeated that this is not true, but the police officer showed a photo. It was taken by the victim during the quarrel. I couldn't believe it, but it was me. There was a girl with my face, but her clothes were different. The police officer said that it was not just a girl, but the granddaughter of the former chief of the police department of the entire state. And her grandfather raised everyone's ears to find and punish them. I cried bitter tears because I knew that with such connections, it would be difficult for me to prove my innocence. But it really wasn't me. We told my father everything that happened that day. I was lucky that there was evidence. In the school attendance log and on that day, I received marks for an oral response in several subjects. My father hired a paid lawyer to investigate. I was temporarily allowed to go home. I told all my new friends and Bruce, my classmate, said that he had already seen this girl somewhere. He remembered it. It turns out it was on TikTok. I immediately found her profile and started looking at it. Her name is Layla. She lives in our state, but in a different city. We are almost the same age. She is older than me by a year, but we are strikingly similar. We even have moles on the face near the lips, one in one. How can this be? I immediately called my mother and asked how many children she had, but my mother swore that I was still her only child. I didn't answer the rest of her questions. I thought for a long time. And then I wrote to Layla. She, at the side of my profile, was probably also surprised and immediately wrote to me. So we began to communicate. I didn't tell her that I was confused with her. I was just getting to know her. It turned out that she was from a dysfunctional family. She had foster parents who were not behaving in the best way. They both drank, and she wonders here and there, always getting into problems. She was a little rough, unlike me. But on the whole, we developed a mutual liking for each other, probably because of the resemblance. Although it was not good, but I did not want to sit in prison for her, and I technically found out where she lives. We went there with our lawyer to talk. At the sight of each other, we both froze looking at everything from head to toe for a long time. It was an amazing resemblance. It seems that even twins are not born like this. After the conversation, Layla said that the girl climbed without a cue and then began to call her a ragamuffin, which caught on. If I saw her again, I would hit her harder, she said. I asked the lawyer if it was possible to settle this point. I didn't want her to go to jail just because someone had more connections than us. The lawyer advised to conclude a truce with a girl, ask her forgiveness. But Layla protested. She refused, saying that it would be better to rot in prison. Then I came up with a brilliant idea. I asked Layla to stay with her parents for a couple of days. Frankly, they didn't even look in our direction. They were too busy drinking alcohol. When we arrived, Layla and I changed clothes then went to the girl's house with my dad and the lawyer. They hid in the car, and I pretended to be Layla. At first, that girl was rude to me in every possible way, called me names, made me ask for forgiveness on TikTok. She humiliated me as much as she could. I didn't like it, of course, and even though I was pretending to be a different person, it was still offensive. But freedom was at stake. And this is a powerful argument to stick your tongue and pride in one place for one day. So the conflict was settled and the girl and I never saw each other again. As for Layla, we started to communicate closely with her. My father saw us and admired us, saying that he always wanted twin daughters. 
we took the time to dig through the family archives, photos, medical records, but Layla was nowhere to be found. So it's really a miracle. Our similarity? I really felt sorry for her because she lived in terrible conditions. I don't think she deserves this. I persuaded my father, and now our lawyer is trying to negotiate with her guardians so that they will give up their rights to her so that my father can adopt her. This is an important step. We discussed it for a long time, but since then, Layla and I have become inseparable. I think it's fate.